transparent. That makes sense. I think I might now have... Yes, I do. Good. I have not yet to use, or I've yet to use the uh, Magnum, and I will very much be sad if I cannot use it on the final boss. Oh, looks like another bomb right there is waiting for me. Let's uh, disarm that. I'd be surprised if you set two on that st staircase. How's it going, Mr. Everywhere? Knew it. Is there another one? Nope. Man, is it useful to have a machine gun? Also, I've uh, amped up my volume, my own volume, a little bit, so I hope you guys can make my voice a lot clearer now, or can hear it a lot clearer now. Oh yeah, that was nothing. Every time Ethan does one of those strength-focused actions, I have to expect his other hand to go flying off. True, but does not look very well attached. Would it be so funny? Or, would be so funny though. Not again. Oh, yeah. Well, it, his hand's like stapled on. It's like attached with metal. It'd be pretty hard to remove that. Looks like a safe enough room. Friday, January... Okay, I thought I heard something. January 16th of 2015. 12.42 a.m. Thanks to you guys, it's been about a week since my head's been clear back to normal. And she still thinks she's got me. You guys really need to work on fixing that. Not only does she look like a little kid, but she's about as stupid as one, too. Mom and Dad are still totally under, though. I was wondering, is this whole family obsession something you guys programmed to her? It's kind of fucked up. Friday, November 4th, 2015, 2.10 a.m. Okay. That bitch Mia is still somewhere in E.V. La La Land, in reality. She gets pretty violent, so I locked her up in a cell. I thought maybe Evelyn would get mad since Mia is her favorite and all, but she doesn't seem to care. She actually goes and visits her sometimes. She thinks Mia is her mommy. Like I said, your bioweapon is fucked up. Friday, September 1st, 2016. Well, it's a new year now. Wow, that's, wow, that's well about a year past. Evelyn's family obsession is getting out of hand. She's making everyone kidnap more and more assholes off the street to add to her freak show of a family. Maybe she's getting tired of Mia not coming around, but it's a pain in the ass for me because I gotta clean up the mess whenever someone new comes along. By the way, Evie's looking sick or something. Her skin is getting all wrinkly and she's getting gray hairs. Is that supposed to happen? It's almost like she's getting old all of a sudden. Wait a minute. Is Evie the 
woman in the chair? Or is Evie the girl? What am I looking at? Oh, hey, steroids. Oh, boy, would it be nice. Okay, I was thinking about using that because it was only one, but it's like, wait, nope, that's actually the uh, magnum round. I think I want to keep that. <sighs> Damn it, well, I'm going to have to keep in mind of that for another time. report Beard E necrotoxin E series dosage test 10 minutes after dose death 5 minutes after dose vomiting 12 minutes after dose, cell calification, or calcification. Oh, that explains the whole thing of the intro. What? Another serum? Did I just make the toxin? E necrotoxin destroys cells of any subject based on the E series bioweapon model. Oh. Use only for disposal of E series assets. The toxin must first be stimulated before use. Do this by placing a sample of the E series cells into the next toxin. So, okay. So, this is literally what's going to kill the girl. Oh, this is a long one. <sighs> it is better. Your voice is yes. La La Land. Holy fuck, is La La Land. What's next? The Bye Bye Man. Well, Ethan right now is technically the Bye Bye Man. Evie has a nickname for the kid. No, this is Pokemon. Evie. Evie Line. Get it? It's because it sounds like Evie. <laughs> That's cute. <clears throat> Anyways, this project was instigated in 2000 as one of the several concepts of the company's NEXBUS, Next Generation Experimental Battlefield Superiority Initiative, working with technical assistance with HCF or from HCF to develop a bioweapon for neutralizing combatants en masse with minimal direct contact. That's, I mean, it's a nice idea, but like that's also kind of wrong. Next pass was later folded, and all its assets diverted to this project. What makes this project markedly different from conventional weapons is the, its ability to turn enemy combatants into allies, converting hostile elements into willing servants. Well, this is relevant, since this is effectively eliminates the cost of not only POW handling, but also combat itself. It's no wonder we had the blank and even Redacted's Redacted organization chomping at the bit to get on board. The project would never have existed were it not for the discovery and Redacted of Redacted, the remarkably progressed Vicarian evolution fungus that we commonly term the Mutamycete. The fabrication method for each bioweapon was to introduce the Mutamycete genome to pre-stage a pre-stage 4 human embryo and perform cultiva or cultivation in a controlled environment over a period of 38 to 40 weeks. The resultant organisms were referred to as candidate specimens and graded based on usability from the 
practical and faulty series A through D to the perfected E series. A common appearance was selected for the bioweapons, that of a roughly 10-year-old girl to ensure ease of blending in with urban refugee populations. The first E-series specimen, Neat Emily, has proved capable of secreting the mutamycete redacted from her tissue at will. It is also of note that Evelyn's mutamycete imposes a profound control over body and mind when introduced to a host organism. We still have a lot to learn about the mechanism by which Evelyn achieves and maintains this control, but the working theory is that the vector is similar to the automeducer pheromones used for quorum sensing in Pseudomonas bacteria. Evelyn's control is exerted in a series of discrete stages, the first of which is hallucination. Almost immediately after infection, the subject begins to see things, images of Evelyn, though she is not in fact there, and even hear her voice, which is inaudible to anyone else. Auditions with infected subjects throughout the stages of infection reveal that at first, the phantom Evelyn appears to be a normal young girl, sometimes desiring companionship or assistance. As time progresses, she begins making more and more extreme demands, including self-mutilation and attacks on other people. The psychological shock that induces helps of this induces helps break down the mind's natural barriers to Evelyn's brainwashing effect. And by the time mental control is achieved, the immunomycine infection has progressed through the entire throughout the body cells, so the body redacted. see that does explain quite a bit about how she can do this shit ah another one <sighs> Evelyn's functions are also including the ability to form organisms from mycelia the fungal filaments the term organism is used loosely here. Strictly speaking, they are organ superorganisms formed of countless mycelia. What's important, though, is that they exhibit a strong survival instinct and will defend themselves ferociously with the slightest provocation. Their fungal toughness and remarkable strength give them significant, significant battlefield potential. The researchers have been calling these superorganisms the molded, made of mold, and also molded as in shaped. The name has a certain elegance to it. Oh, this is talking about those little fuckers. For the treatment of accidental infections, performing redacted on samples of Evelyn's body tissue produces a unique fungicidal serum. Administering the serum to an infected subject will cause the mycelia to calcify, but if the subject's cells are already largely invaded, the serum will be fatal. Since the treatment window is so small, the serum's primary use is therefore disposal of infected subjects rather than a cure. In exploring the serum's potential, we found that subjecting it to redacted would enhance its effects to extreme potency, becoming a compound we now call E neurotoxin, or never mind, E necrotoxin, which redacted even in tiny amounts. What's been interesting to observe in Evelyn's behavior is her obsession with the concept of family. In experiments, we found on multiple occasions that infected subjects were compelled to act as her mother or father, treating her as if she were really her daughter. Why did she settle upon family as the theme of her mental control? This is just speculation, but it could be that she instinctively understands that a family unit is better suited to blending into social groups than a lone girl. On the other hand, well, a sentimental sword, might suggest that she's making up for a perceived lack of love in her quarantined upbringing, a parent's love. Yeah, that's probably it. This is kind of why you shouldn't subject people to things like this. Oh, for a moment I thought that was a Mr. Everor, I was ready to shoot it, but it turns out to be not. I almost forgot about the steroid in the other room, so let's, uh, oh, okay, good, we got this here, so I won't forget, as I'll be able to pick it up in, like, a few seconds. Alright. <sighs> 